In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Tascam DR701D field recorder. In this episode, let's have a look at the Tascam DR701D, which is a four input recorder made by Tascam. And it's kind of the next step up from the 70D. This unit is on loan from our friends over at BH Photo. They have not told me what to say in this review, so I get to say anything I like. And this entire episode is recorded with the DR701D and an Audio Technica AT4053B microphone. First off, let's let you hear a sample from this microphone completely and totally unprocessed. Now here's a quick audio quality test. In this case, I'm recording with the Tascam DR701D. I have feeding into that a signal from the Audio-Technica 4053B microphone, uh, just via XLR into input one. And in this case, all I've done is normalize the audio to minus 24 LUFS, which is the standard for uh, the United States in terms of broadcast loudness units and I have done no other processing to the audio whatsoever, just so you can hear exactly what it sounds like straight out of the recorder. You can make your own judgments about how good this sounds, if it's good enough for your purposes. Let me tell you a couple of things about the preamplifiers that I found here. First of all, I think they're great. They sound very, very good. I think they're better even than the previous generation Tascam HDDA preamplifiers, which they had in their Tascam DR60D Mark II and their DR70D in terms of noise, and I want to stress one thing here before I talk about noise, uh, self-noise generated by the microphone input itself. That is one factor in the overall one, you know, when you're evaluating a preamp, that's one factor. I, it's attempting to use that as the only factor because it's quantifiable, at least in, in some cases. So don't, don't look at it that way. It's just one factor. <laughs> I found these to be very good. Um, I recorded down in my basement studio, which has sound blanket hanging up between myself and, the, and a freezer that's running there. I have some old blankets on the concrete floor. I used the intro clip to this video or this episode. And what I did is after the dialogue, I recorded 10 seconds of silence. And with silence, I put that in air quotes. This is a very much a practical noise floor test. So this was having the gain set to mid and the uh, trim here set to about 50%, as you can see here. And what I found was that the average RMS amplitude was minus 71.5 dB RMS for the noise section, so or for the silent section. And that is actually quite impressive. In fact, that's probably one of the quieter preamplifiers I've used. Definitely in the same league as the Zoom F8. Just to give that some context, the max RMS amplitude on that same silent section was minus 63, so that's the loudest it got. And the minimum RMS amplitude was minus 75 dB. So again, very quiet and a very nice job by Tascam as a nice little upgrade from the DR70D and the DR60D Mark II. Now, the unit also has a 3.5 millimeter input. You can see right over here. Um, that one, you know, and it's typical for an unbalanced mic input like that. That one doesn't perform quite as well. However, I uh, did the same test in this case with a road link, so a wireless lavalier system with a 3.5 millimeter balanced output into the Tascam 3.5 millimeter input. I found that the practical noise floor in the exact same environment I described before sat at about minus 60 dB RMS once I loudness normalized the audio to minus 24 dB. And that's just a sort of a to standardize the measurement for my practical case here. This is not the perfect <laughs> self-noise measurement, and obviously the microphone's involved too, and the environment's involved too, but um, just for my own kind of sanity, being able to compare from recorder to recorder, that's actually pretty decent. Um, I would say it's probably better than what you would find on a Tascam DR05 or a Zoom H1, for example, 3.5 millimeter inputs. Um, so pretty good, but it wouldn't be a reason to run out and buy this on its own. <laughs> I think this is really useful when you're going to put um, XLR inputs in. The build quality is a very nice step up from Tascam's previous recorders. This is a magnesium alloy case. Feels very, very solid. And uh, that's important. I think that some people were disappointed and perhaps felt I was being a little misleading <laughs> when I talked previously about the Tascam DR60D Mark II. 
Um, the preamps in this are fantastic as well. However, the build is definitely plastic. And, um, you know, some people said, well, that's not pro quality. And yeah, for, in terms of build quality, it certainly isn't, but the, the preamps are very good. So just to kind of keep it all in context, I think this is a closer step to pro quality. Uh, these right here are metal, these little sort of straps, and then the controls are all plastic. So that's what kind of differentiates, I think, this, which is sort of, I would say, a mid-level microphone preamplifier and recorder relative to things like sound devices or Zaxcom where almost everything is metal. And in fact, for example, on the zoom here, um, even these potentiometers here are metal. Um, the buttons are plastic. Uh, the knob here is metal, whereas on the Tascam it is plastic. It does have a quarter 20 tap on the bottom along with an anti-twist uh, tap, which is very nice. So when you're using the Manfrotto system or other systems that have anti-twist, that's nice. And the idea is you place this recorder between your camera and the tripod. So you would connect the quick release plate here. And then on top, it comes with uh, this bracket here. And I actually took it off because I wasn't using it, but um, you can take it off or you can leave it on to attach your camera on top of the recorder itself. Or if you prefer, it also comes, and this is a clever design here with a, a cold shoe accessory cold shoe. So that's uh, a nice little alternative there as well. In terms of overall size and weight, 17 centimeters wide this way, six centimeters tall or a little less than six centimeters tall, even with the bracket on top. And then let's see, it is 11.5 centimeters deep this way. It weighs 654 grams with batteries. It takes four AA batteries. And for those of us that reckon in pounds in the United States here, that's about, it's a little under 1.5 pounds. So really nice and lightweight and easy to use. Just like its predecessors, it records to all the critical pro level standards in broadcast wave format or just wave format, 16 or 24 bit, 44.1 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz, and even 192 kilohertz sample rates. When you go up to 192 kilohertz, you can only record two channels at a time. Um, however, in my case, I'm almost always recording 48 kilohertz. If there's something extra special, maybe I'll go, or a, you know, a customer for some reason wants to go to 96 kilohertz, we can do that as well and still record all four channels. Little tour here, we have inputs, XLR inputs on this side. These are Nutric connectors here, TRS combo inputs. So Nutric is very well respected in the industry overall. Um, so again, Tascam is not skimped on these, which is really nice. And then number four is over on this other side here. On this side as well, you have the 3.5 millimeter input as well as the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a remote jack. This is the dial here that controls the level of the headphones. And then over on this side, we have an HDMI input and output. We'll talk more about those in just a second. An USB input. We also have a camera input and output and a line output, as well as a BNC connector for time code in. Now, in terms of battery life, how do we do? This is no different than any other recorder I've used, <laughs> pretty much. Now, remember the Zoom F8 actually has eight AA batteries. This Tascam has four. This also has half the number of inputs that the Zoom F8 has, but I'm finding about the same kind of league as far as battery life is concerned. If you're powering from the internal batteries with four Eneloop nickel metal hydride rechargeables, I get, if I'm, if I'm uh, recording with two different microphones, both phantom powered by the recorder itself and recorded at 48 kilohertz, 24 bit with the HDMI input, I get about two hours of battery life. And that's actually right in line with what they specify in the manual and on their website. So that's something to keep in mind. If you just have two mic inputs, say for example, you're recording with two Roadlink or some other sort of wireless system that doesn't need phantom power, you're gonna get substantially more than that, probably closer to three hours per set of batteries. So that is something to keep in mind. If you do move up to lithium batteries, lithium AA batteries, such as Energizer, you can get that up to about twice the, the time, they say. So I haven't tested that specifically, but that's typically been my experience with those type of batteries. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, one of my favorite things to do actually is to power with a USB battery like this. I have my life charge. This is a uh, 16,800 milliamp hour USB battery just plugs right into the USB port here and you can power it for <laughs> probably about, oh, I'm going to guess here about 20 some hours, 20 hours probably. So that is a nice option to have as well. The Tascam DR701D does have limiters. However, 
they are digital limiters, it would appear. So I did a test here where I pretty much yelled into a microphone <laughs> to see how the Tascam managed that when its limiter was turned on. Its limiter has some interesting functions or settings. You can turn it on at just a overall global level. You can turn it on to a three band limiter. So it will just compress the band that is uh, exceeding the threshold, which is kind of cool. The problem is, is that it's implemented digitally. So the reason that's a problem is that if this get, if the sound gets too loud, it first comes into the analog XLR microphone preamplifier. If it gets too loud, that's actually going to saturate and then eventually just start to distort. And then it gets converted to a digital signal. And then after it gets converted to a digital signal, then the limiter does its job and tries to reduce it. Well, at that point, it's a little too late. And you can see here in this example, the you can see that the waveforms completely chopped off and are just completely distorted, even with the limiter on. So I wouldn't say that you could trust this limiter to prevent those types of issues. You're still going to be very need to be very careful in terms of setting the gain level at the start of your shoot or the start of your clip. Um, you just don't, at this price point, you just don't get that level of analog limiter that you would get in something like a sound devices recorder or the amount of dynamic range that you would get in a Zaxcom recorder where you don't even necessarily need a limiter because it has so much dynamic range. Now, as we mentioned before, we have these HDMI inputs and outputs. What are these for? Well, they're actually used for sending time code from your camera, if your camera can send it, to this device or sending control signals to the recorder from your camera. So what that looks like in practical terms is it, with some cameras that send the control signals, for example, my Panasonic GH4, if I put an input, an HDMI output from my camera to the input here on the Tascam, when I press record on my GH4, it starts the recorder recording at the same time, which is awesome. Really nice feature there. But also on the Panasonic GH4, the Panasonic GH4 has the capability of sending time code from the camera to the recorder as well. So what that means is that if you're recording on your camera and you're recording the audio here, it's actually writing time code to both the video file on the camera and to the audio file on the Tascam unit at the same time, which makes syncing in post much, much easier. So that's a fantastic new little feature that I haven't seen on any other um, recorders in this league so far. It also has an output, which allows you to also take the video stream and send it out to a monitor. So obviously most cameras, at least in the consumer grade, only have one HDMI output. So you can also monitor uh, the video at the same time that you're re recording to the, the audio recorder here as well. So really nice feature there. Now, you'll notice it also has a BNC input for timecode. So this is a lot of the more professional devices will have timecode over BNC, this type of cable. And this is not a generator of timecode, but it is a. it does have a timecode clock, which means you can use some other device to set the timecode clock in the Tascam, and then this should keep up. However, what I found, I used my Zoom F8 as the master clock, if you will, and I jam synced the Tascam from the Zoom F8, I disconnected the cable and let them both run for about an hour. And I found after an hour that the Tascam was already five seconds ahead of the Zoom. Now, the first question we have to ask is, okay, which of them was drifting <laughs> or were both of them drifting? Well, what we can say about the Zoom is that in the other tests that have been conducted with the Zoom F8 and its time code, it's, it holds up very, very nicely. In fact, when there was a test done with, and we'll put a link for this down below, between the Zoom F8 and the Sound Devices 788T recorder. And they were both synced from a third timecode generator. They were stuck in a freezer overnight. When we came back in the morning, the two recorders were within two frames of each other. So the Zoom F8 has a reputation with a very good temperature compensated crystal oscillator, which is a fancy name for an electronic clock. Um, this has one as well. However, it does not fare nearly as well. So if you're going to use the BNC timecode in, you really need to keep your timecode generator connected to the recorder while you're recording for this to keep good time. In terms of RF interference with, say, for example, cell phones, creating interference in the recorder itself. I have not run into any problems. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now. Uh, that's not to say you never would, but I think it's magnesium alloy body is definitely working in its favor. And so I have not experienced any of those issues. Let us know if you do. One of the things that was a little bit of a bummer on the Tascam DR60D when we looked at that, oh, 
Uh, I think we looked at that last year. But the, one of the, the downsides on this is when you tw when you change the um, the gain trim here, and I believe that's gain trim in this case, when you changed it, it sort of stepped down in these very discrete steps that you could actually hear in some cases. Not very often during dialogue, but you could hear it in other cases. So the, the question is, is this, does this work the same way? And no, it doesn't. It's continuous. So when I turn it down, and I'll go ahead and talk here, and we'll turn it down a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. And now I'm going to bring it back up, back up, back up. I don't want to go too hot because I don't want to clip here, but I'm bringing it up and up and up. We're at about three quarters right now. I'm going to talk a little bit more softly, and that's what we get there. So just so you can see there, that's continuous. It doesn't have the discrete stepping issue that we had with the Tascam DR60D Mark II. Now with the line out and the camera out, and the camera in, you can actually change the output levels of these in the menu. And that brings us to the menu <laughs> and the screen. Let me talk about the screen first here real quick. The screen is actually really nice. It's just like the previous test cam recorders. It's an LCD screen that works really well outdoors. So when you're working out in the bright sunlight, you can still see everything very, very nicely. And that's fantastic. Um, it also has a different backlight than the Tascam previous Tascam recorders, which all seem to have this sort of amber glow to them. This has a more whitish glow to it. And I actually find this a little bit more pleasing to the eyes. Um, does it make a practical difference? Uh, not a huge one, but um, again, they continue the tradition with good LCD screens. Now you'll notice here as we're talking, not only is it showing us the level on our one input there, but we're also showing a stereo mix levels down here at the bottom as well. I've chosen to record this one in mono just because I'm doing a single microphone. It's working just great for us. Um, but this is actually a six track recorder. And what that means, you can record four in isolated individual tracks plus a stereo mix down of all those four tracks together. So you can get your level set for each of the four microphones here in, and feed that into a stereo mix track. Why do you care about that? Well, that's going to be helpful, especially for people that are going to, that have to turn around their productions very quickly. So if you don't have time to do a lot of audio post-processing and really kind of get in and fine tune everything, being able to set it up during the production itself and then just using the stereo mix down as your you know, final track, you can do that. So it's pretty helpful for, for situations where again, you need to turn that around quickly and you're not gonna get in and really, really um, do a lot of post-processing on the ISO tracks or the isolated individual tracks. One thing about the menu uh, <laughs> made me kind of laugh. It's one huge law. It's like one huge long menu. You just keep scrolling down and down and down and down for 18 pages. Um, so it's kind of a it's kind of a funny thing. Actually, it's a little different when you're actually recording, which we're doing now. Um, but there are 18 pages of menu when you're not recording. And uh, it kind of narrows that down when you are recording to just settings you can change while you're recording. In any case, it's uh, it works okay. It's not my favorite. I actually preferred the menu on the Tascam DR60D Mark II, where you could kind of navigate a little bit more quickly to where you needed to. Um, but either way, it works. Overall summary on the Tascam DR701D, I think it's a great option for the solo shooters. And that's really how Tascam is marketing this, is it's their flagship for solo shooters. If you're a dedicated sound field location guy. This may not be the best choice. I think the knobs are a little bit small. They're plastic. I'm not sure how well they'll hold up over time. I think they're going to be pretty good. They're protected by the, you know, the metal straps here. And, you know, I've never had a problem with my other test camera cores, which had these same knobs. Um, but overall, I think it's a nice balance between price and durability and features. Great preamplifiers and overall a nice little package. Now, how does it rec compare to, say, for example, the Zoom F8? Now, first of all, price-wise, the price goes to Tascam. Obviously, this is this runs about $600, whereas the F8 runs $1,000 US. So obviously, that's one thing. This is a four input, whereas this is an eight input. Um, I think you really need to ask yourself whether or not you ne really need eight inputs. I Technically, I don't, <laughs> even though I own the Zoom F8, and it's my primary recorder at this point. I don't actually have it because it has eight inputs. I have it for a lot of its other features. And typically I only use three inputs at a time, uh, max maybe four. So um, this would be sufficient in terms of the number of inputs. Build quality, I think goes to the zoom. The zoom is just a little bit more durable in terms of its overall build. These potentiometers, as I mentioned before, are actually metal and the overall device is definitely much heavier. heavier. Um, but it seems a little bit more durable as well. But that the Tascam is no slouch on that front. Definitely a step up from the DR60D Mark II, which is a plastic body. Definitely also a step up over things like the Zoom 
H4N. Battery life is pretty much a draw between the two units. They're both not amazing for the internal AA batteries. Um, I think the Zoom probably gets a, a little bit more time only if you're recording, you know, just two inputs or three inputs like I typically am. You get, you know, you have eight batteries powering it where you have four in the Tascam. So uh, pretty much a draw. However, for external batteries, I think the win goes to Tascam if you want to use inexpensive USB batteries like this. Again, you, you can have something like 20 hours of record time for about $40 US with a, you know, a pretty high grade USB battery. Of course, the bad side on, you know, the downside on that is you're using USB connectors. These can pop right out. So that's not exactly pro <laughs> quality. Obviously the number of mic inputs, if you need eight, you're gonna wanna go with something more like the Zoom. Um, if on the other hand, you're comparing audio quality, they're actually pretty similar. I would say the wind still goes to the Zoom in terms of dynamic range. And this is just a subjective impression. Um, they both have limiters that are digital. So you can't, you can't say that one of those is better than the other. And the problem with a digital limiter again is that if you get a sound that's really, really loud, someone starts shouting, for example, there's nothing a digital limiter is going to be able to do if that signal gets too hot. It's going to go ahead and distort in the analog stage, then get converted to digital, and then the limiter is going to try to do stuff with it. doesn't work either way, so both of them have that same issue. However, the Zoom F8 has a little bit more dynamic range, so you're less likely to run into that issue. In terms of the mixer that comes with each of them, the Zoom F8 comes with a Bluetooth-enabled uh, app on iOS devices, which is kind of cool in the concept, but in practice it's a little bit fiddly, and I, don't, I didn't think it worked very well. Um, you put your finger down and out, you know, suddenly you've moved 4 dB, which is not, you know, the idea with a linear fader is you want to be able to finesse those, and there wasn't a lot of finessing going on there until you jumped 4 dB and then you could finesse it. So, the, you know, the difference here on the Tascam, you have to go into a wonky menu to change the levels, um, and these knobs are so close and so small that it's a little bit fiddly. Um, so, I think it's kind of a draw on that front. But again, I think these are both probably best suited for solo shooters who aren't going to be doing a lot of mixing during the shoot. They need to get it set up, and then they step away and go operate the camera. Time code definitely goes to the Zoom. The Zoom's time code, temperature compensated crystal oscillator seems, which again, fancy name for a time electronic timepiece or time clock, goes a lot better here on the Zoom F8. Uh, this one on the Tascam, it's really great that you have the HDMI input from your camera, so you can at least keep those in sync, even if they're both drifting together. Um, that's cool. But if you really need a proper time code solution, you really need to look at the Zoom F8. Menu system, I think, definitely goes to the Zoom. It's much easier to operate the Zoom's menu, I found. Um, it's also broken down into submenus, whereas the Tascam is, again, 18 pages of continuous menu. If you want to gang the trim for multiple inputs, which is sometimes a pretty handy thing to be able to do, the Tascam can do it, the Zoom does not have that feature yet, and until Zoom adds that in a firmware update, I'd say the win on that front goes to Tascam. Entering metadata definitely goes to the Zoom, not even really an option on the Tascam. The, really, the only thing you can really control in terms of metadata on the Tascam is you can choose what to call the file name, so you have to manually go in there and change the file name each time. On the Zoom F8, you can actually do that via its Bluetooth-enabled app. If you're in the market for a field recorder, which one of these should you get? Well, that depends on what you're going to be doing and what your priorities are. I think, for example, some questions you can ask yourself is, and you know, we just went through that win-lose kind of scenario, I guess, between the two, but if you're working on jobs with pro-level cameras with BNC timecode input, you're probably gonna wanna go with the zoom. Um, if you're working mainly with DSLR and mirrorless hybrid cameras, Tascam may be a great choice, especially if you've got HDMI out from the camera that can control the recorder and send timecode to the recorder. So that's kind of a cool solution. If you need more than four inputs, obviously you need to go with the zoom. But I think in most cases, four inputs is almost always enough. And incidentally, you can also gang two of these units, the Tascams together via HDMI. Want to power with cheap USB batteries? Wind goes to Tascam. If you want to power with pro quality batteries like uh, Anton Bauer Gold Mount or V-Lock or whatever, these, uh, the Zoom F8 is probably the better choice with its Hyros or Hyrosi power input. So there was an overview of the Tascam DR701D. I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and leave any questions you may have down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.